Welcome back to our program, We Connect. My most delightful guest is here, right here with me, Dadichi, Australian and an astrologer. Please, just keep watching this. Delightful. <sighs> yes, Thank abs you. <laughs> absolutely delightful, because absolutely fascinating and interesting. Thank you. How many more are there like you in Australia? Um, well, I think it, there's no one like me and there's no one like you. Everyone is unique. <laughs> unique. Again, that's what mm. astrology teaches us. Right. And that's what I'm trying to get across in these books, that we are unique, even though we look at the sun sign of millions of people. Really, in each and every one of those, it's a kaleidoscope of different colours. And if we look within ourselves, we can learn about our own talents, our own God-given attributes, which we can develop to empower ourselves and to live a really good life. Right. Now, you also look at um, the horoscopes of various people around the world by your own admission. Yes. And in India as well, politicians, are they very much in your gambit? Well, political astrology is, is a very specialised area. Mm -hmm. I'm not a super duper expert, but of course I'm curious and I've been here the last couple of weeks, so naturally I've had a bit of a cursory glance at some of the horoscopes of the rich, the famous and, and some of the politicians as well. Can we, can we touch on some of the politicians? Shall we open the book? <laughs> yes, okay, go ahead. Uh, there's Put one here have... that, I, that, that I was very keen to uh, look at. I know she was a film star, Jaya Lalita. That's, yeah, that's the chief minister of our state, by the way. <sighs> yes, and uh, I had a brief look at her horoscope. And there are sometimes um, patterns that seem to replicate in the charts of very famous people and people that are going to rise up. We can't always be 100% correct, but often we are. And if we, we see dozens and dozens of horoscopes, with these similar positions, we can generally say, look, this looks as if the person is going to rise to a very high stature, which I can say about uh, this particular woman. Very fiery. She has the, uh, the moon and the Mars together in the fixed sign of Leo. And she has the Jupiter in the fifth place from that mm. with the exalted career planet. That's a very, very powerful combination for someone who will rise up well, Dadichi, I uh, don't really know very much about yes, astrology. Yes, I'm probably being a bit too technical. No, 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 that's fine. So, it's simple uh, enough uh, for me <clears throat> to understand. But uh, what, about, uh, what about big film stars? And you talked about Hollywood personalities and you talked about yes. all these kinds of people who come to you. What if I turned up to you with a fake, you know, chart? Well, there's, this is the beauty Would of, you know? Well, this is the beauty of Vedic astrology, apart from the birth horoscope. Um, a good astrologer will always calculate a horoscope for the moment that the person comes to them. And then, of course, there are omens, what we call omens, or mm. serendipitous events that are going on around, studying the face of the person. And then the body of the astrologer himself, according to some of the Kerala uh, astrology, the astrologer should be very, very aware of everything that's going on within himself. So the birth horoscope is only one component, if oh, you're doing really? it correctly. Oh, okay. So with all these other factors, we can normally verify whether or not that horoscope is correct. Also, whether the person coming to you is genuine or not. That, you have to know. You shouldn't entertain people that aren't genuine. Although, I'm happy to talk Gen to skeptics. <laughs> and in fact, on this tour, I've had some brilliant little predictions for the, for the skeptics, who really? I think have been converted. <laughs> I'm happy to say. So you're doing a good job on that. I hope so. <laughs> now, you're also into writing some books uh, as well. So let's talk about that. Well, there's uh, in the Western concept 12 sun, uh, sun signs and I write 12 books every year. I've been doing this uh, for the last six or seven years. And uh, an unusual partnership with the publisher Harlequin, Mills and Boone, mm. which many of you They're know, only into romance. And, they're into romance, know, that's yes. right. And, and people are thinking... Astrology? What's that got to do with... Has it got to do with romance is the point. Is that the reason why? Well, astrology say... does reveal components of the romance, yes. but I guess as a demographic, you know, the, the romance market is very much women, 18 to 55, and astrology for the most part is uh, more appealing to women. So I guess Harlequin, Mills and Boone did a little bit of market research and hit on the fact that, hey, this could sell, and it has. It's been, it's been a very, very popular series over the years, and we're selling to many different countries, South Africa, uh, England, four Scandinavian countries. Till recently, we were doing uh, France, Southeast Asia, Australia. So it's going very, very well. Now, India. Right. Buy my book. <laughs> well, would you say? <laughs> okay. Would you say it's it's a good thing to actually look at your um, at your future or your chart from a book rather than to come to somebody like you? I think the the book is an introduction. Okay. Yeah. You know, sometimes people are just a bit curious. 
And of course, it's not a great deal of money to spend. Mm. Uh, and if you develop a bit more curiosity, then you can go to an astrologer who will prepare the horoscope in a much more detailed way. But I do also say I'm, I'm, I'm a little opposed to even my own clients perpetually coming back for more and more and more. Because as I said at the outset, the job of the astrologer, I think, is to empower people. Mm -hmm. It would be futile for a sick person to go to the doctor, be healed, and continually keep going back to him. The doctor's job is to heal the person. Mm -hmm. I think the astrologer's job is to help empower the person, give them hope and faith in the higher power that they themselves should rely on their own intuition as well. Right. Now, uh, for uh, ever so long, we have had the Western world interested in what's happening in India, in Indian astrology and, you know, Vedic astrology and the way things are done here. Are you seeing a reversal by any chance? It's quite interesting that, like myself, I've taken such interest in, uh, you know, chanting and meditation and the Vedas and Hindu astrology. And in the West, that's becoming quite prevalent. In the East, what I've noticed here is the trend is opposite. People are wanting, you know, the Western fashions, they're wanting the Western astrology, the Western music. So yes, I think East is meeting West. And I think that can be healthy if it's, if it's uh, done in a cohesive and uh, respectful way. Right. Uh, sometimes in India, we view people who are outside of our country as just being kinky and therefore, you know, going into some of the stuff now. No offence meant to you. Mleka. <laughs> no offence meant to you. But that is sometimes the way people are viewed, you know, when they tend to take an interest in something that is Indian. Yeah, see, this is all to do with nationalism. I don't think that's unique to India. Really? I, th I mean, in Australia, we're opposed to the large numbers of Asians coming into the country. Mm. And uh, in the Philippines, I've seen the, the Asians, especially the Chinese born, are very much against the Philippines. So I th I'm very much a uh, yeah, pull down the barriers, get rid of the flags, without actually you know, uh, disrespecting culture and history. I think that's the problem with the world. We have too many barriers, too many uh, you know, nationalistic ideologies. So astrology is there to teach us that inherently at the core of our beings is spirit. I mean, we're all the same spirit, right. even though there are all these kaleidoscope of variations. Right. We should respect that in, in, in everyone. Right. So the next logical question is, how, <laughs> how do Indian astrologers view you? <coughs> what kind, um, of, kind of feel do you get? Well, my own guru regards me uh, with great respect now. Mind but you, you wouldn't be his student if, if that was the case. That's right. It took me years. I mean, uh, the, the Western mind is very rational. Mm. You know, I'd read thousands of books and he kept telling me for years, OK, stop now. You can stop. Rely on that intuitive process within yourself. Do your meditation. Just rely on that uh, into what we call uh, nivriti marga. The mind is always going outwards, looking for the answers in everything, including astrologers. He teaches me, go inward, rely on that inner self. So ast the Hindu <laughs> astrologers, before they talk to me, do tend to uh, have a bit of scepticism I would, I would imagine. The moment I start talking their language, nakshatras and the Navamsha and the Shadvargas. They know that you know what you're talking think, about. Well, maybe he's just read a few books and that. But then, you know, as we get into the topic, they'll realise that uh, I'm maybe not as expert as them. Uh, we always have to humble ourselves. But the, 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 you know, the basic knowledge is there and I'm developing that. Right. Another short break. It's time for us to go yet again, but stay right there with us. Because when I come back, I'm going to ask my guest about other things that he's very, very interested in. So you don't go anywhere.